Hello, people of the swinging world. If you're watching this video, you probably know some dancers from Ukraine. And not all of them are using social media very actively today. So you might have no idea about what's going on with that person you danced with in 2019 or before. So I asked four of my friends from Ukraine to talk about their life today, three months into the full-scale invasion. How are they holding up? What became their new normality? And do they continue dancing? Before we begin, please give this video a like, write a comment so that more people can watch it. Now, let's meet the dancers. I've added all the social media profiles into the description, but here is a quick introduction. Here is Taras Melnik. I mentioned him in a previous video. He is a father founder of Kiev Lindy Hop community. He is the head of our biggest swing dance school and the first teacher of several generations of Ukrainian dancers, including me. Zhenya Tsvetkova is a brilliant jazz and blues dancer. She performed, she taught around the Europe and online. She danced every day, regardless of the mood. But today she's doing something very different. Next, Tanya Kaleda. She is one of the greatest authentic jazz dancers in Kyiv, a part of the Just Age show. She is the choreographer behind some of my favorite showcases, like this one, which took the third place in Virtual ILHC 2020. She does a lot of tap, study African dances, and gives me tons of inspiration. This is Alina Sokulska. She started dancing swing 14 years ago in Kyiv. Today she lives in Barcelona and writes her PhD on comparative literature and performance. You might know her for her unique synthetic style in UK jazz, bebop and swing. These were their lives before February 24th. Festivals, parties, classes, friends, practices, all the things you normally enjoy as a swing dancer, all the things you love and cannot imagine your life without. Until one day, everything changed. That morning we woke up from my mother's call. She uh, was crying and repeating, Tanya the war has begun. Um, at, the same, at the same time, we heard some explosions. It was quite loud. But my first reaction was a little uh, strange. I just sat still for 10 minutes and uh, couldn't breathe. So we woke up at 10 and I saw million messages, phone calls, everything like on my phone. And then I, I said like, okay, we need to check what is happening. And we saw that war started and we tried to understand what to do and uh, check with the friends what they're going to do. All roads already was blocked at 10 in the morning. Uh, uh, it was... Uh, a lot of people, super crowded and uh, panic. Tanya eventually moved to a village in Kiev region where it was relatively safe and helped locally. Zhenya wanted to evacuate, but at first there was no possibility and later she decided she can be useful where she is. She took a car from a friend who was stuck abroad and started delivering food and medicine to people who otherwise couldn't get it. We started doing something, I mean, like like helping, driving and doing something because... Otherwise, you are just getting crazy. You're like losing your minds because you're just sitting every day, like whole day and night and just scrolling, checking all the news because you cannot do anything. I mean, like you cannot uh, do any of your hobbies or something because you need to or do something mechanical like this. I was doing it like eight hours every day and I was like, perfect for me it's very mechanical i was just driving and i was just give taking giving buying boom, 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 like this i did not believe until the very last uh, that the war will, uh, would begin so everybody were talking about it but it's like it's, uh, even now it seems uh, like it, a bad dream taras stayed in kiev for three days and then took his family to a village in ukraine's west there, he helped with construction and registered to a military office. Uh, some several times I was at with my things that I was thinking that I'm going to somewhere. 
but uh, they said that they need it right now because like I'm an officer without any combat um, experience. So they don't need me at that time until now, as, I, as far as I understand. A lot of Ukrainian men and women too voluntarily joined the army or territorial defense forces all around Ukraine. Our friends, dancers and musicians among them, those who couldn't do it helped with money and time. Ukrainian volunteers are known as people who can't find anything, even a unicorn if the army has requested it. But it's not only us who is helping Ukraine win. I'd like to take this moment to thank all of you, people of the free swinging world, for your donations and time at demonstrations. Your support is priceless. As I already told you, Alina doesn't live in Kyiv now, but her family does. This war is affecting every one of us, regardless of the place where we live. So my February 24 in Barcelona was like, uh, first, after receiving this news, I was like shaking like for, I don't know, two hours. Then I just woke up and I went to every demonstration that was in the city. Um, you know, mix of fear, panic, uh, rage, anger, um, helplessness, you know, tears, like everything. Alina has already raised 6,000 euro through classes and talks. She created the initiative where artists all around the world can give workshops and concerts and raise money for Ukraine. But she also entered the informational front. I took on myself the responsibility of being a bridge between people here who either don't know anything or they don't have time to get into the details, you know, the, how they say, conflict. I took this mission on myself to explain people as a Ukrainian, as a Ukrainian who has friends and family in Ukraine. And I think this way, I thought that it's very important to build this empathy because... Uh, you know, it's personal story. It's not something that you read in the news. During this war, we became united as never before. Facing this danger and aggression from another country makes us finally realize what it is to be Ukrainian. It is to defend your freedom, your history, your loved ones and your cities. Seeing what all Ukrainian people do, it makes me very proud to be Ukrainian. When war started, I couldn't... I, I couldn't move, I couldn't do any workout or nothing. I mean, like my body was, wasn't my body. It, it, it was all the time tired. It was all the time intense. With the time, it became clear that it's, um, our, our lives had changed for quite a long period. So we have to do something with this. I think on the third week, I could listen to the music a little bit. But with dancing, it was very, very hard. With the full-scale war going on for 100 days as of now, you cannot be in shock all the time. Eventually, your mobilized resources start to fade away and you need to find how to renew them. And for us as dancers, there is no better way than to dance. Body is something that immediately reacts to something. So I felt dancing was like a ther therapeutic moment to, to dance it out and, and to go back to my body. And I think this is what actually kept me controlled because otherwise I uh, <laughs> would explode. And you know what? One thing that I realized that, uh, okay, I can't stop dancing because this is exactly what the aggressor wants. He wants to paralyze us and that we uh, quit everything we love. You know, we quit every mechanism of psychological survival. After the first shock faded away, Ukrainian swing dance community was looking for ways to feel anything besides pain and anger. Teachers received multiple requests to get back to dancing, to get back to the body. So we didn't work with recording, but then I tried to do online just for, for, for free. Or you, if you can pay, you can pay. Or if you don't, so you can just join. Because I realized that some of the people who stayed or some of the people who left, they don't have money, but they need some support or at least to see they, their friends and to, to, to do something what they used to do. It was very nice. It was like a fresh breath. I was breathing again, and I, I realized that I want to do it, and I do want to do it more. Being in a village, I started to make free online classes. Um, the aim was just to get people back in their body. For me, sometimes it's very important to just touch yourself and to understand then it is you, and you are alive, uh, and it's already a good thing. In the hardest time, you are looking for something that made you happy before. 
That is why Taras started in-person classes in Kyiv and Tanya in Lviv. Hard decision because, uh, um, you know, some people are fighting, yes, for us and uh, we are dancing there, yes, and it's like it's, I, I spent a lot of time to think about it, but um, a lot of people said, um, uh, write to me and send me that, okay, we need it because we have to to find, so it's very good, it's good for mental health. Even for the first time when we are meeting, we are even not, not dance, we just talking for a few hours. I think today is even more needed than before because the dance uh, gives people a restore, mental and physical restore. Uh, especially in the hope. I can see how it's important for people to just touch each other and to communicate. So you see Ukrainians are dancing, but it's not in spite of war or because of war. It is because at all times you need this connection to your body and the connection to another human beings, especially when your loved ones are far away from you. I think it's not more about uh, some physical shape or some uh, learning something new. It's more about mental health because we, we, could, we could just meet and do something together. I continue my practice as well. It might sound crazy, but I even create some choreography. I don't know when and where I can I use it for shows, but, uh, but it's really important for me to create and it is not like we are back to our happy lives, not even close. There are still air alarms and the bomb can hit your home any minute. But the same as our army needs ammunition, we need these mental resources to be able to help the army and everyone in need. Unfortunately, the interest in helping Ukraine win is fading away. There are other things that deserve your attention, I understand. But the cruelty of this war is happening with your friends before your eyes. So I'm asking you not to stay aside. You'll find the ways to help Ukraine in the description box below, but it is not only about the money. Write the Ukrainians you know and ask them how can you help them and how are they doing. Post on social media, go to protests, write to your representatives in power. Please don't let the world forget about this war. Otherwise, we might never dance together again.